Speedrunning and glitches go hand in hand together. They allow speedrunners to slash down the completion time in specific speedrunning categories, and more generally, to learn about the game's inner mechanics and even the development process. However, at times some discoveries can be so groundbreaking that they take over the entire speedrun and replace any other existing strategies. In a previous video of mine, I covered one of the most broken glitches Elden Ring has to offer, the Pizza Swap, also known as the Chainsaw Glitch. In it, I mentioned that the glitch had been patched out with the 1.05 version and that a likely DLC release would turn it into a mere chapter in the game's speedrun and multiplayer histories. But with patch 1.07 strongly suggesting that additional content is coming by referencing so far non-existing objects, I must tell you that Pizza Swap is not gone just yet. Far from it, in fact, as two different methods of performing it have been found since the release of my original video in September 2022. One of these methods is so easy to execute that anyone, and I mean anyone, can do it. In this video, I will briefly go over what the pizza swap is in case you haven't seen it yet, thoroughly explain the new discoveries that reintroduced it to the game, and conclude with what all this means for the game's speedrun and multiplayer future. If you like deep dives, this one is for you. Let's get into it. Man, I just can't do this anymore. Fierce champions are simply too powerful. Huh? What was that noise? Who the heck are you? I am Ronda. Wait, THE Ronda? Rowdy Ronda Rousey? Inside Raid Shadow Legends, the sponsor of today's video? That's right. But can you help me out? Damn right I can. Raid's got something extra special happening. They have released a legendary champion of their own based on the MMA of pro wrestling star Ronda Rousey. You can get Ronda for free right now just by logging into Raid for 7 days between now and February 20th. With Ronda's arrival, there's also a special promo code RAIDRONDA available for all users granting special bonuses perfect for leveling up this legendary champion of the Battle Lords. And what other top champions does this faction have? My favorite are the reworked Black Knight and Lady Annabelle for her big personality. And if you haven't tried Raid yet, you can click my link in the description or scan my QR code on the screen to receive unique starting bonuses. They include a free epic champion Aina, 200,000 silver, 1 energy refill and 1 XP boost. And also 1 ancient shard to try your luck at summoning some other awesome champion. Maybe they'll even be from the same barbarian faction. Like Horolu! All this treasure is waiting for you here. Available for 30 days for you players only. Thank you Raid for supporting the speedrunning community. Pizza Swap is a glitch that completely took over Elden Ring's speedrun with how strong and fast it can be. It exploits the ability to use a stance, a skill that can be held continuously, on a weapon that ordinarily doesn't have it. The original method of execution is called Pivot Swap and uses the player character's pivot animation, which is this quick 180 degree turn. By facing away from an enemy, activating the stance with a button tap and locking onto said enemy, the pivot animation plays out, during which it is possible to enter the equipment menu. With some precise inputs, one can then swap out the currently held weapon for another, without the stance ever being interrupted. If the player then quickly closes the menu and immediately resumes holding the stance button, the stance is now being performed on the newly selected weapon. This is utterly broken, because the game, having no information for what stance to use, defaults to the first one on its internal list, the Giza's wheel stance. This stance hits repeatedly, in very rapid ticks. Meanwhile, the damage and hitbox are both taken from the newly equipped weapon's L2 attack. The interaction can result in all of the game's boss fights looking kinda like this. For a more elaborate explanation and also why the Serpent Hunter is extremely overpowered with this technique, I recommend watching my video dedicated to the glitch. It is linked in the description. That said, the developers at From Software saw how broken this interaction was and fixed it by making entering the equipment menu during a pivot animation impossible. At first glance, this seems like a sufficient fix. Still, it doesn't address the underlying issue of how a weapon behaves when performing inappropriate attacks. From Software are not to blame here. Their solution to the problem was adequate at the time, while also addressing some other unintended behavior when swapping gear during the pivot. An in-depth address would require changing the primary code of weapons and animations, so it only makes sense they decided to use a more surface level fix. But it was only a matter of time until a new method of transferring a stance from one weapon to another was found. This time, the action queuing system was to be exploited, almost identically to the infamous bow glitch from Dark Souls 3. The following still works even on patch 1.07. 
Okay, time out, time out. Just a few days before this video's release, From Software decided to drop the 1.08 Colosseum update, which seems to have fixed the method I'm going to talk about next. I say seems because it is quite plausible that a replacement will be discovered soon. Still, the pizza swapping method discussed after this one still remains in the game with all its perils, so yeah, thanks Miyazaki. Elden Ring player and glitch hunter Bifas discovered that depleting one's stamina while also queuing an action leads to significant malfunctions of the action queue and animation systems. Let's step back to look at Dark Souls 3 and its bow glitch for a moment. Wielding a bow in the left hand when stuck in an animation such as the backstab, followed by pressing L2 to two-hand the bow and simultaneously inputting a direction, allows repeating previously stored actions. The interaction stems from a defective code called by translating the player's inputs to a moving left-handed bow toggle. Let me explain. Animations in From Software games are comprised of upper and lower parts. The lower part handles the character's legs, while the upper part controls the rest of the body. It also manages unique properties such as using an item, a spell, or a consumable. This flawed code essentially allows the proper lower body animation of moving in a direction to play out, while preventing new upper body animations from happening. As such, the upper body's active state doesn't get reset, and the last successfully executed upper body animation is repeated instead. Reproducing these animations led to many glitched interactions, with perhaps the rapid fire great bow being the best known. During it, the weapon art of a repeating crossbow serves as the initially stored animation. The crossbow is then swapped out for a great bow, and the bow glitch is performed. The result is executing the crossbow weapon art on the newly equipped bow. You can see this weapon art swap in action within the boss rush mod speedrun category. In essence, this is also possible in Elden Ring with what we call zero stamina swap, but not with such a broad spectrum of initial animations. Let me explain the process using a basic interaction between two consumables. We can start throwing a dagger by simply performing the action. The game now remembers the dagger throw as the last upper body animation. Then we switch to a pot. Now, without moving in any direction, we deplete our stamina. This is important because like in Dark Souls 3, walking or toggling weapons, including two-handing or unto-handing, would clear the last stored action and disrupt the process. So, I backstep and then start rolling, allowing me to input rolls without the game registering a standalone directional input. The dagger throw animation is thus not cleared. During the last action that depletes the stamina to zero, here this particular roll, I input tossing the pot while also holding a direction. That way, the dagger throwing upper body animation is performed on the now selected pot. It is clear how this is similar to the bow glitch with the movement, only the bow L2 is replaced by an item when stamina hits zero. Throwing a pot like a dagger is just the plainest application of the glitch, and much more can be achieved. For example, storing a spell cast and performing the glitch leads to the spell being cast even with insufficient focus points. Or when the player doesn't have the proper casting tool equipped. Or any casting tool for that matter. Because the action that empties a stamina bar doesn't necessarily have to be a roll, it is possible to create cool combos like a rolling attack into a spell cast. The glitch can be repeated even after executing the stored action, provided I don't toggle weapons or keep holding a direction. Hence, I can recast the particular spell repeatedly without having any FP. To reiterate, I'm not inputting a second spell cast, but using a consumable during the last action of the sequence while also holding a direction. Unlike in Dark Souls 3, it is impossible to swap one spell for another and cast a second spell with the original spell's animation. This is why I said the zero stamina swap is similar to the bow glitch in execution, but has some new limitations on what can be done with it. Nevertheless, to display some of the creativity that can be achieved with this glitch, one can store the crossbow loadup animation, then swap the crossbow for an extending weapon and activate the zero stamina swap. So deplete stamina and when hitting zero, input a consumable and a direction. This way, it is possible to transform the weapon to its extended state, but keep it as such permanently or at least until the game is reloaded. You can do this on both hands at the same time, for genuinely magnificent outcomes. Does this make hammers finally viable? We do not currently understand what happens within the game's code exactly. Action queuing and animation storing have been broken in many From Software titles and have led to revolutionary discoveries, such as the Moose Swap in Dark Souls 1, 
or the infinite cannon glitch in Bloodborne. We can only assume what goes wrong in the code because of previous experience with Dark Souls 3. As you probably know, all major recent From Software games, except for Dark Souls 2, share the same engine, so we can make these speculations. As you have to input the direction, like during the bow glitch, there must be a disconnect between using the item while walking and playing the proper upper body animation. This disconnect then refuses to play new upper body animations and repeats the previous successful one instead. It could be as simple as a syntax error where an if clause ends prematurely, not executing the rest of the code. In this theoretical problematic code, everything works as expected as long as clauses 1 and 2 are true. The whole branch returns true and the code ends. But problems arise when clause 1 is true and clause 2 is false. In that case, the code does not return anything and ends before it can evaluate clause 3. This would be fixed by connecting the first two clauses with a logical end operator. Now, if clause 2 is false, the code doesn't end early and checks for clause 3 instead, potentially resulting in the correct upper body animation playing out. Alright, this is where we connect the zero stamina swap to the pizza swap. Indeed, one of the actions that may be stored this way is a stance. I can equip my Uchi Gatana and perform one of the attacks out of its stance. Then, I swap the Uchi for the Serpent Hunter and perform the Zero Stamina glitch. Using an item and walking forwards executes a stance action on the newly selected weapon. At the same time, similarly to the old pizza swap method, the game defaults to the stance of Giza's wheel. As you can see, the pizza swap will work the same way as when using the patched out pivot swap. Bosses and players can yet again be sliced into pieces. The difference between the two methods is evident when we put them side by side. The old method allowed transferring an active stance from one weapon to another. Pay attention to the lack of any windup on the new weapon. Meanwhile, the zero stamina technique activates a previously stored stance action. Therefore, the windup of the stance plays out. An important thing to mention is that you cannot hold the stance before the glitch. Simply tap L2 and press R1 or R2 to attack. If the stance is held, you end up with an animation as if our chainsaw ran out of fuel. In terms of usefulness, the new technique has the primary advantage of not needing a target to be performed, so it can be activated in more locations. However, draining an entire stamina bar can take a while, and remember that in Elden Ring no stamina is used when out of combat. This mostly negates the freedom gained from not needing a target, and means the zero stamina swap isn't the most practical for a speedrun setting. The more significant reason I find it problematic is its ease of use. Literally anyone can do it without needing macros or other similar means. This pizza swap could negatively impact the multiplayer of the game if left unfixed. Additionally, any unrestricted speedrun on current or future patches would still be quickest with the pizza swap, instead of regularly fighting the bosses. I believe that doesn't make for the most fun experience in the long term. With this in mind, we are not done yet because a third method for executing pizza swap was discovered by Glitch Hunter Dunmaster007. This one may have the most versatility of all three. Like the second method, it is based on queuing a stance rather than carrying it from one weapon to another and involves the backstep animation. Suppose the player attempts to enter the equipment menu during a backstep. In that case, it acts in the same way as the fixed pivot, simply not opening. However, if the backstep is entered while the player is blocking, the menu suddenly becomes accessible. Besides that, it is possible to queue another action during a specific time of the backstep. This action will then come out when the backstep animation is finished. It could be a simple R1, resulting in a running attack. Or yet again, it could also be a stance. Putting the two and two together, it is possible to queue a stance during the backstep and swap out the current weapon for a new one before the stance comes out. With the right timing of the weapon swap, the game executes the queued stance action on the new weapon, resulting in a pizza swap. At first glance, this backstep swap may seem the best out of the three methods, but there are some crucial limitations. Yes, this pizza swap is the most versatile with the locations it may be used in, since it doesn't require depleting stamina, nor does it require having a target. However, the other two methods default to the Giza's wheel stance no matter which weapon was initially used to achieve the swap. Meanwhile, the backstep swap requires the first weapon to be the actual Giza's wheel. This is because its stance is the single one with a windup that can be queued up during a backstep. Using something like the Uchigatana's unsheath and trying to queue it up by pressing L2 doesn't make it come out after the backstep. The button must be held for it to happen. Funnily enough, although the stance does not play out, the actual L2 input can still be stored. 
You can tell because when the Uchi is swapped for the Serpent Hunter, the Great Serpent Hunt Ash of War is executed. Yet, merely storing the input like this never results in a pizza swap. So, although this method may be the most versatile in positional requirements, it has the downside of needing to obtain the physical Giza's wheel from Volcano Manor's upper floor. Besides that, the Zero Stamina method is mechanically straightforward to perform, and while pivot swapping is definitely not easy, it can be mastered over time as demonstrated in the All Remembrances speedruns. Yet this third backstab method seems to be frame perfect, meaning the weapon swap needs to be confirmed within 1 60th of a second. If the new weapon is equipped too early, the regular Ash of War comes out. If it is equipped too late, the weapon isn't changed and the cute Giza's wheel stance comes out as expected after the backstab. I have no doubt that with practice, it is possible to get better at performing it, but achieving the same consistency in a speedrun setting as with the pivot swap variant seems unlikely. Even so, using the glitch for at least the fights with no time pressure would undoubtedly be viable and thus constitute a necessary strategy for future unrestricted speedruns. What does this mean for the game's speedrunning future? In the likely case that a DLC comes with at least one remembrance, the current All Remembrances category will become obsolete because, well, it won't be All Remembrances anymore. Today, speedrunners use the 1.02 version of the game for the category to access several older glitches that do not exist anymore, such as the Wrong Warp or Pegasus. However, playing the DLC on a non-DLC patch is impossible, thus anyone intending to compete in All Remembrances will have to use at least the first version of the DLC. This is not a bad thing. Having spent considerable time speedrunning this most broken version of Elden Ring, I admit that the fun fizzles out rather quickly when all of the boss fights turn from testing the player's reactions and strategies to executing one solitary glitch. Of course, we now have the alternative of running glitchless. Still, I've been hoping for the DLC to bring a middle ground where at least a few glitches can be used without completely overhauling how the game is played. After all, they can cut down on all the horse riding the glitchless speedrun has. Besides, discussions concerning what counts as a glitch tend to be complicated and resurface with any new discovery, so avoiding the need for such a category split would save the community a lot of headaches. Yet if Pizza Swap remains in the game until that point, it will recreate the two extremes, either run with Pizza Swap to compete in an unrestricted category, or use no glitches whatsoever in the glitchless counterpart. Keeping the exploits in the game also spells trouble for the PvP experience, especially with the Zero Stamina method being so easy to learn. I could see this being abused frequently. There is one more piece of news related to the pizza swapping saga. I mentioned in the original video that something called WTech is a way to increase the DPS of the pizza swap or even the regular Giza's wheel stance. It works by repeatedly pressing forwards, which resets the player character back to its idle state after each tick of damage. Then, the wait from idle to another tick of damage is much shorter than from one damage tick to the second one. It increases the DPS by about 30% over no WTech pizza swap. Since then, the speedrunner Panic discovered that the idle animation can be entered with even greater frequency by repeatedly tapping left and right, or A and D. We very creatively call this the AD tech. The DPS increase over W tech is substantial, but as always with Elden Ring, things are not so simple. To gain this DPS boost by shimming left and right, the player must not be locked onto a target, which makes it pretty much impossible to aim with the pizza swap. Hence, the target must be extremely close to the player to make this new technique helpful. This makes it virtually useless for the current All Remembrances speedrun since most kills occur from a greater distance. Even so, the discovery shed light on how exactly W and now AD tech increase the frequency of damage ticks, meaning we have a greater understanding of the underlying mechanic. More fundamental knowledge is always welcome and can help us with future discoveries. With the DLC likely just around the corner, the time for From Software devs to fix these massive glitches is now. It will help keep the game in a healthy state for the resurgence of players to come with the additional content. Hopefully, this video can highlight these issues besides showing you how the exploits work on a deeper mechanical level, which I always find fascinating. Of course, if you have any questions about the techniques, leave them in the comments and I will try to answer them. Before I end the video, I want to thank you for 50,000 subscribers. Knowing that the stories I get to tell are liked by so many of you is humbling, and rest assured that I will keep on working hard to bring you the best possible entertainment. I see all the positive comments you guys leave, and really, really appreciate them. Of course, if you're not subscribed yet and you like the content, consider hitting the uh, black button nowadays.
or white I guess, depends on the theme. With that being said, as always, thank you for watching and have a great day.